All right, welcome to It's Still Real to Me, presented by Zaslow Show 2.0. And of course, everything on Zaslow Show 2.0 is presented by my friends at Anajar and Levine Accident Attorneys. 800-747-FREE, any kind of injury, an accident you're involved in, you call them. You, you tell them Zaslow sent you. That's, that's fine. Come on. But anything you got going on there, you need some help with an injury, you call Anna John Levine, Accident Attorneys, 800-747-3733. It's still real to me. Second episode. Last week, we debuted the show. It was a reaction show, WWE Crown Jewel. So today will be more like what the show will regularly be, which will be a reaction to the shows throughout the week the big storylines, and what we're looking at moving forward. We welcome aboard my partner here, Joey Levin. Joey, hello. How are you today? I'm doing great, and um, I'm excited to get this one in the books because obviously, like you said, last week was a reaction show, and we knew reaction show, easy to do it on a Saturday because the show is happening, but we we were discussing for a while, like, what is the right day to do a one-day-a-week wrestling podcast because there's so much content I think last night answered the question. It's Saturday. You got to do it on Saturday because right now, as long as our tribal chief is is still the, the undisputed heavyweight champion and the Usos, which we'll talk about, are on top, you have to react after SmackDown, right? So how upset were you? Let's start there. So so we'll start with SmackDown. That's what's fresh on everybody's mind. If you're listening to the show today under the Zaslow Show 2.0 banner, you know, SmackDown was, you know, however many hours, you know, yesterday. So it's fresh on your mind. And by the way, Joey, the first episode of It's Still Real to Me last week, great reaction. Got a bunch of downloads. I'm really pleased with that. So thanks to everybody. Uh, you know, love you long time. So last night, WWE SmackDown, we start the show last night with, uh, I mean, we start it with a bang. And this is one of the things that I've noticed since Triple H took over. And this is an AEW move, okay? AEW loves this, where they start their shows with a great match. They start with the big, like I remember, what was it, maybe the first Grand Slam that they did, where the match uh, that started the show was Daniel Bryanson versus Kenny Omega. They started the show with it, you know? And Brian our, Danielson. Brian Danielson. Yeah, Brian Danielson. Who did I say? Did I say Daniel, <laughs> Daniel Bryan? You said, you said, <laughs> you said Brian Daniel. You said Daniel Bryanson. No! Brian, okay, so, so yeah, that <laughs> Let's started. Go. That, that started might be what I call show. him from now on. <laughs> so, Brian Danielson, Kenny Omega started the show. I was like, yeah. well, that's interesting. They're just coming right out the gate. And WWE now takes a page out of that playbook since Triple H took over, where, where they'll come out the gates with the hot match right from the start. Because WWE style has always been, we start the show with a promo. But now, like last night, they start with New Day versus the Usos. I like that style. I like, I'm, I'm, let's buckle up. This is going to be a great show. I like it if it matters. Uh, and last, that match obviously mattered, right? So they're with AEW. I think sometimes there's a tendency to start the show with a great match that doesn't really matter. Like it, it just, I know Tony Khan's style is we're the, we're going to be a wrestling show. We're going to have great wrestling matches. And so we're going to open up the show with a great wrestling match. And, but sometimes, which we'll discuss AEW in a bit, I have this tendency to feel like things get thrown together. I don't understand why people are wrestling with each other, regardless of whether it's a great match or not. Uh, and I don't think Triple H will do that. So as long as he sticks with, like, I, they're not all going to be Usos New Day for the longest reigning tag team champions of all time. But, yeah, I, I love starting it off with a bang like that, especially because there's only so many people who can cut a 15-minute promo to open a show. And on SmackDown, it's the bloodline. So it's a good change of pace. The match went about 30 minutes. Um, so it took up a quarter of the show. Yeah. But it was it was worth it. And, see, in a situation like this, I am I listen for who the crowd is behind, all right? And I'm not watching that match last night with, with a real rooting interest. I guess if I have – I just want the match to be good. I mean, you know, my son says to me, he goes, hey, who are you rooting for? He, he needs to have a rooting interest. You go, yeah, I just want a good match. So I don't really have a rooting interest. But if anything, I want the Usos to retain because – I want to see where the storyline is going. I want to keep wondering who's going to be the ones to beat them. We talked about it last week. 
I think we both kind of have a feeling who we think is eventually going to be the ones to beat them, be it Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn somewhere down the line. But so if anything, I'm hoping it's the Usos that win last night. So I, I want the continuation of the story. But that crowd last night, Joey, way behind the New Day, way behind the New Day. Did you agree? Yeah, I think it's it seemed that way, although there's one person I know who definitely wasn't. And you probably didn't catch this because I, I got it. Of course, I'm going McAfee right off the bat. But they were in Indy and first row right behind Michael Cole was Pat McAfee's producer. And oh, is that going, right? He was going hard for the Usos. Going oh, is that right? Usos. Yeah. But yeah, no, it seemed like more of a new day, a new day crowd. I was rooting, I mean, rooting, so to speak, for the Usos. I thought just from a storyline perspective, it done, didn't, it wouldn't have made sense to take yeah. titles off the bloodline at the moment. New Day's it not was, involved in any type of story. Like it's, yep. where do you go and, from here? And it's the New Day. We'll get into the new day a little bit later too, but the new day is not the new day unless they're the whole new day, right? So if you're going to do something like take the titles off the Usos, you got to have Big E. And who knows if we will ever have the full new day again. They're just not the same without the full trio. Uh, so I, the match was incredible. And I was, I was just, I was happy with the result and I was happy they gave it the time it deserved because. And they were they were hamming it up pretty hard. Michael Cole and Wade Barrett, two best tag teams of all time, definitely two best tag teams of this generation for yeah, sure. Not all time, um, but I thought it deserved thirty minutes for the importance of the match, and I, it obviously delivered. And there was a moment I was watching it with Mike, my brother, and I was like, "This isn't about to happen." Oh, alarms going off. Uh, this isn't about to happen, is it? New Day is not about to win this, is it? And that's that's how you know it's a good match. That's how, I, you, there, that's how you know. There was a moment there where I was like, oh, my God, they're they're going to do this? I mean, I was doing that last week during Crown Jewel where we I was holding it, my yeah. breath with those false finishes. Like, is he actually going to win? So, no, that that's a good match because you go into it saying, all right, I know this one guy is going to win. And if in the middle of the match you're, you're questioning on that, you know, two count, is he about to get to three? That's a good match. I also liked yesterday during that match where there was no bullshit. Yeah, nobody rings like you know. Solo Sikoa is not there ringside. Sami Zayn's out for something personal, which is a shame. Yeah. Uh, but there, there was no one ringside. There was no Gaga. There was nothing going on there. It was a clean finish, and I liked the I liked the end moment where all four competitors are are on their ass in the ring, and they're just kind of giving each other that nod of respect. Like it's, yeah. it, I, 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 I thought that was a proper way to close it. Yeah, it was. I think it was well done all around. Did last night, obviously starting with that first match, but then the whole show, other than a few moments that I'm sure we'll go, we'll run it down. Last night felt kind of pay per view ish. No, like last you know, night it's funny like in big, my notes here. Show. It's funny in my notes here. I'll, I'll I'll take notes for the shows and I'll highlight in bold the things that we need to make sure that we talk about today from the shows and everything that I put down from SmackDown last night, I put in bold everything. Yeah. I, I think a lot of important things happened in the show last night. So moving on next up, you got the six pack women's challenge for Ronda Rousey's title at survivor series war games going into the match. I felt Shotzi was going to win. Uh, they're not going to do. First of all, they've already done Raquel Rodriguez versus Ronda. It was on TV, but they're not. They're not going to do that for pay per view just yet. All right, and we have seen it before. And the only other ones in the ring that I thought would, you know, Sonya uh, is is not ready to. They're not ready to put her up against Ronda. I wanted Liv, it to be Sonya. Can't. I'm a big fan yeah. of Sonya, but the, you, you could see they're not going in that direction yet. I'm a big fan of Sonya Deville. Um, Liv Morgan, she already had her crack there. They're not going to crown, they're not going to give Liv that match. You know, Zia Lee has been toiling and doing absolutely nothing, so it's not going to be Zia Lee. Great social media follow. Is that right? Oh, yeah. yeah that would be uh, unexpected. She, hey, Zia Lee, she's good. Okay. Let's just say she's good. And and so I look at Shotzi. Shotzi recently turned back to a baby face with no explanation, but Shotzi recently turned back to a baby face. They gave her back the tank. They're clearly saying, hey, let's present this girl in a different kind of way. Uh, 
I thought she was the right choice to win that match last. I mean, you know, it's the right choice because they're trying to give her some momentum, and it's also the right choice of someone to feed Deronda right now. Well, that's that's the key, right? Who else? There, the and that's where I'm still with the SmackDown Women's Division. There's just not. There's not a lot. There's not a lot of meat on the bone, so to well, speak. Well, it's funny because I think the most interesting part of the SmackDown Women's Division right now is the relationship between Ronda and Shayna. That's awesome. Well, I was going to say, like, that was the best part of that whole situation was you know, it, it, Ronda Rousey, the baddest woman on the planet, the last person, the last woman on the planet who needs a heavy, who needs a mu- who needs muscle, now has muscle. But it's great because Shayna, yeah, like Shayna can Shayna can talk. And that's the that's the biggest problem with Ronda. No matter how hard she tries, face, heel, uh, whatever it is, she's just kind of cringy on the mic. And well, Shana- but she's gotten better on the mic because she's allowed to be herself now. Because she's a heel. Yeah. She's terrible on the mic as a baby face. Give her the microphone. Go be Ronda Rousey. And she's much better on the microphone being Ronda Rousey. Yeah, and this, and, but Shayna's, I think Shayna's one of the best in the company. And this obviously will ultimately lead to them finally going head to head at some point, right? And which will be uh, which will be a great that'll be a great program, I think. So I think that was that was probably the best part of it to me. But outside of Shayna and Ronda, Shayna now being with Ronda, there's just not there's not a whole lot there to me. I, I don't know. I, I remember watching Shotzi a little bit in NXT, and obviously I've seen what she's done on the main roster. I don't really have a strong opinion on her one way or the other. So maybe that's I, on, I'm maybe totally that's on, you. maybe that's totally on me. You. I, totally I don't know agree. if that's a product of her or me, but I just don't. Uh, so I didn't have a ma- major reaction to it. I was just like, I, I, I wanted, I wanted um, Sonia mainly because of what I talk about. I think Sonia, a, a, a Sonia is really good in the ring, but also name, name a female well, and on the she's SmackDown roster who can go badass. on the mic. She's a right. legit badass too. Right. She has an MMA background. Like I didn't like it when, you know, when she was just transitioning out of the general manager role and they had her kind of in that chicken shit heel role. And it's like, she shouldn't be chicken shit. She's like an actual badass. Yeah, for sure. And the only other thing that stuck out to me about that match was I know that uh, they have, um, they have, <clears throat> excuse me, um, what's her name? Um, God, this is this happened to me last week. There, I was blanking. She was the that she was just the champ. Um, that Nikki Cross? No, 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 no. In the in the on in, on SmackDown uh, on, on SmackDown that just lost to Rousey. Who just lost her belt to Rousey? Oh, Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan. I don't know why this <laughs> happens to me, but my brain is a little fried. Um, I know that since she lost, she has this new like. Yeah, she's got an edge to her like, now. Edge to her. Yeah, I think she's gonna kill some, like literally, like legit kill somebody. Like she almost killed herself last night. <laughs> she, she, I think she smacked her face on the table. Um, and I'm pretty sure when she did this, she did like the uh, the the um, senton or whatever she did off of the top rope onto a table a few weeks ago. She like hit her leg. Yeah, on she's the extreme table. now. She's extreme. Yeah, there's a there's a fine line I think between extreme and <laughs> reckless, right? Like she's she looks that that spot last night with her and Raquel Rodriguez looked real bad, or it looked like it could have been real bad. I think Shotzi was the right choice mainly because she's a good one to feed to Ronda for for war games. Yeah, I know you loved uh, and I did too. La Knight is working the promo. He's upset that he is not in the SmackDown World Cup. And he he is, I'll tell you, he sounds so much like The Rock, man. He is so good on that mic. His cadence is very, very similar to OG The Rock, late 90s rock. And his catchphrase and, is, is great. Late is his catchphrase is like late Austin. He's, he has the yeah, yeah. He's he's really great. And then you get an unexpected encounter and a little bit of physicality. With Bray Wyatt, I do like how we're waiting a while. And this is the way to do it, all right? Not everything needs to be shotgun. We're we're not going to get Bray Wyatt in the ring in a match for a while, it seems, which I think is totally the right move. But we saw him for the first time since returning. Got a little physical last night, and he headbutts LA Knight. 
Yeah, this will be the last time I bring up my brother on this one, but I got to shout him out on this. November 1st, I checked the receipts last night. He randomly sent me a text and said, hot take, Bray's first feud should be with LA Knight. That's, uh, uh, two weeks ago, uh, for no reason, didn't read about it, did, just said, that's who I think it should be. The two of them on the microphone back and forth would be pretty hot. Yeah, I, and I didn't really get it. I was like, I, I don't know. Is L.A. big enough yet? Does it bury L.A. Knight? Because obviously whoever Bray is with in his first feud, he's going to destroy him. But after seeing it last night, I'm all in. Because I'm kind of all in on whatever either of these guys do, particularly L.A. Knight. Listen, if, 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 any, if anything came out of that last gimmick he had, it's the fact that anytime he's on the screen, it titillates the juices of my guilty pleasures, okay? L.A. Knight is my guy, and I want to see this guy on a rocket ship and I guess being with Bray with the way the company is treating him, even though you're going to get killed in some respect, unless he some, for some reason joins Bray on some level, because it seems like eventually there's going to be a Wyatt stable again. Uh, maybe that's a route, but either way, give me as much of these guys. Give it to me every week. I love it. I love it too. Uh, real quickly here, Sarah Logan officially makes her return. I mean, she kind of returned at the beginning of the year. She was in the Royal Rumble, like you know. So that right. was the first we'd seen of her in a you know since she was released. Uh, she's of course married to is it uh, I is it Ibar? I can't tell the difference. I don't know which one's which with the names. Right, but like, she's married I, I, to the yeah. smaller of the two. Okay, the, the less not, hairy one. The yes, less hairy one. Yes, she's yeah. she's married to him. And and so it's it, it's a perfect match. I loved her look. She comes in barefoot, you know. She the the makeup I really dug, and she's a big girl. So for her, you know, it seems like a natural fit. I'm not a big fan of the Viking Raiders, but like I said last night when I'm watching with my son, I go, I'm a fan of that right there. You know, I I think that's a good mix right there. The Viking Raiders have never done anything for me since they joined WWE from NXT. But that version of them where, like, they're nasty and they're not doing bullshit with, uh, you know, who was it with um, when they were with... Street uh, Profits? Yeah, with Street Profits. Like, the, the, the games and stuff? Yeah, yeah. like, that's hey, for me, you know. But, but that last night where they're being nasty and they got Sarah Logan behind them, like, I dug that. I was into that. I'm all in on anybody or any team, any superstar, any wrestler that was awesome in NXT when Trips was running it and is now back on the roster with Triple H running it. There's potential there. Those guys yeah. were sweet in yeah. NXT and they can be awesome in the tag division and that Sarah Logan can be really good too. Uh, I was excited about their return to see what they can do under Triple H. I was also extra excited because as much as I love Zelina Vega, I when that when I saw that that match was going to happen, I was like, "What are we doing here? There's 20 minutes left in the show. We need Roman Reigns, and we have Zelina Vega and Hit Row about to have a singles match. This this isn't happening, is it?" And then the Viking Raiders showed up, so that made me even happier because I I didn't get it. I didn't see what was happening there. So finally, as as we wrap up SmackDown, uh, did we have our answer last night to who is next up for Roman Reigns? Like, is the ne is Roman's next feud Sheamus? Uh, no. I think we have our answer for War Games. We have uh, we have Bloodline versus Braun Brutes and Drew McIntyre in a fifth person. It's a great point because at the end of the show, as they signed off yesterday, Michael Cole's sign off last night was. The bloodline has a brawling brutes and Drew McIntyre problem. Yeah, and WWE put out one of those tweets where it was like, "This isn't a brawl. This is war." Oh, okay, right. so you know what it is. But it's but the but what'll be interesting is but from there they could go with Sheamus as the next guy, right? Yeah, but also we have to see. Well, they could go with Drew, which I don't think they'll do again. They could do Sheamus, who would be great. But who's going to be the fifth guy for that team? Well, and I feel like Drew. I feel like we're getting. Well, I mean, wouldn't it be KO? Like he hasn't been seen in a few weeks. Like it's, and, and you can't introduce that last night because for whatever reason, Sammy wasn't there. I, I feel like it's got to be it's got to be Kevin Owens, and then maybe KO is the next guy for Roman, which would make sense. We could do a long term thing with KO and the Bloodline. And it looks like however. they're setting up. They're finally gonna, you know, Drew is finally gonna try and get some revenge on Solo Sokoa for like, like they, those two are gonna. Feud That's a cool now feud. I like that because Solo debuted and caused Drew the title at Clash the Castle. This is why the Bloodline is so good. <clears throat> There's, you don't know, like, all last night, 
after the Usos won the titles and they had the backstage segment with Roman where Roman was like, I have to take care of business and I need you guys with me. Did you have any idea what was going to happen the rest of the show? Did you have no. any clue? I was like, what business do you have tonight? I, well, why, are you even, why are you even here tonight? You're not at every SmackDown. Why so are you the, here? In the moment, the Twitter speculation was, what? if you watch the clip again, his hug with Jay was very long. And it was longer than his hug with Jimmy. And there was some people thinking, ooh, maybe this is where Jay's out. Maybe this is it. Like Jay, because there's been the tension. Is Jay oozy enough? Is Jay being oozy? And there's been some tension of, you know, is Jay, does he think he's the man? And Could now they, they eventually now, get now to they a be, place where Jay now, is the one who dethrones him? It's, I, well, I, it would, it would all come full circle yeah. because this all started with yeah. Jay and Roman, right? So yeah. it's it's possible. I, I think it's probably unlikely. Be amazing. <laughs> but I think there was some people who were like, is there going to be something here with, with, is he going to break up the bloodline just now? Because he's not like, they're the goats. Can he handle having other goats in his, like that type of thing? Can he handle not being the, only I didn't notice the, the longer world? hug. I wonder if we're eventually going to revisit that. I think this, yeah, the J, the J stuff is not, there's no way it's over. Sammy wasn't there last night either, obviously for yeah. what Michael Cole said were personal reasons. So there's definitely the J and Sammy and, you know, Jay being a little pissed off and all that, that can't just go away. I mean, we're, we're probably what only two weeks removed from where he said, I don't give a damn what the tribal chief has to say. Mm -hmm. Like that, that doesn't go unpunished by the head of the table at some point. Like he gets it. So that's a good point. That's a good yeah. point. It wasn't that long ago. So you, you, you don't just say that about the tribal chief and then, and, and, and not live it down. But uh, the only problem was, the whole end of the segment was completely botched by whatever happened with the microphone. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, Roman's gotten so good that he, he covered it up pretty well by busting on Sheamus over it. And Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that's true. You kind of wonder what Sheamus was going to have to say for himself there. Yeah, but it, it, it works out fine because now we, we have an idea – this is this is at least we have nine uh, seemingly nine of the ten participants for the men's war game at Survivor Series, so and I, I don't mind it. I I, I don't know. I, I I was trying to think of a creative way, like who else could it be? Could it be people from Raw? But now we know uh, OC and Judgment Day are doing their own Survivor Series thing. Yeah, I like uh, that they're not doing a Raw. I thought I thought originally it was going to be Raw versus SmackDown again. I'm glad they're not doing that. Let's let's yeah. just make it, you know, the the rivalries that are going on right now instead of trying to contrive Raw hates SmackDown. Why? Why is Raw hate SmackDown? So yeah, and I, also, I, I like it. Also, like Brawl and Brutes in War Games, that's fun. Yeah, it's gonna be good shit. That'll be that'll be a good match. And we've seen Butch in War Games, right? He's he's done it before yeah. in NXT, right? Yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. He uh, was on team. He was on team McAfee. Okay, so to wrap up SmackDown here, the biggest story from last night was the the Usos retain they're now the all-time record holder because like Michael Cole said and I like this kind of stuff where he adds in and they try and make it real like sport where because the Usos have no championship matches scheduled between now and Monday they now are the record holder like I I dig that I I, I like when they try and make it more like sport in that regard right. so big story last night was Usos they're now the all-time record holder. Let's run through it here. We don't have to get into too much detail, all right? But let's run through it here. Top 10 all-time tag teams. Run through real quick, real quick, Joey. What were the uh, uh, what were the rules here? You know, what, what, what was the way that you put together your list? And then I'll give my list. Top 10 all-time WWF, WWE tag teams. Okay. Well, and, and WCW too, if you want, whatever. Yeah, this is just wrestling. This is professional yeah. wrestling. Yeah, it's wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a couple things, at least for my list. And let's caveat this by saying this is my list, okay? This is not the definitive list. This is what I think. This is for me. This is, I, this is still real to me, and I love it. So this is my list. I looked at five things and then some just personal preferences, right? So I looked at impact on the and these are not there's not weight here this is just the five things that i looked at impact on the business right that's a big thing 
are they an actual tag team or were they kind of thrown together for for a nice little run and then they weren't a tag team anymore? And then right. So you're saying like don't give me Stone Cold and Triple H together uh, when they were uh, you know running roughshod. I'll give you one that actually almost made my list, but they just couldn't be on it. Rock and Sock Connection. Okay. Right. I like they were less than a year. They were thrown together. They were incredible. Right. But they're not one of the best of all time just because they were kind of thrown together. And what was that? A Triple H, uh, uh, Stone Cold, the two man power trip. Right. Right. Yeah. Look, mega powers are not on my list. Okay? It's funny you said that because I considered mega powers. I considered this was part of the conversations I was having last night, but I, I just couldn't. It, they're not. Okay. Um, entertainment value overall. How much do I just enjoy watching them? Right. Did, I mean, are they fun? Did, did I, do I remember them? Like how much do they stick out in my mind, in my memory? In ring, how good were they as a tag team? Like just their in ring capability. And then yep. how long they were doing it. Like, were they, how long were they at the top of the game or how long were they even a tag team in the game? I think that's really important. Um, and then just for my list, I was born in 1986. So I would probably, my first memories of wrestling are probably when I was like five or six years old. So if you were a big time tag team, sorry, Heart Foundation. You're not putting the mid, you're not putting Rock and Roll Express in your top 10 is what well, you're saying. Listen, Heart Foundation, that might be a controversial one not to be in there. A lot of people think ret tag team wrestling, they think Heart Foundation. Not on my list. I just don't remember them. Okay. There are tag teams from back then that I do remember. Rockers barely missed my list. Barely wow. missed my list. Barely. Um but, All right, let's hear it then. Let's hear it. Top okay. ten, you're to count down from 10 to 1, yeah? I'm gonna go 10 to 1. Okay. 10, Harlem Heat. Winning most winningest tag team in WCW history, 10 tag team titles. Number nine, this one will probably be controversial. Young Bucks. Wow. Changed. Listen, and I'll give a quick explanation on Young Bucks. Obviously, their in-wearing work speaks for itself. Obviously, how long they've been one of the best tag teams in the world speaks for itself. They turned a YouTube vlog into a wrestling company. You want to talk about impact on the wrestling business. The okay. second biggest promotion in the world is because of being the elite. Okay. Can't convince me otherwise. Uh, so that was... That was nine. Ten, nine, eight. The Outsiders. And they, re they were actually much higher on my list. But I dropped them because I don't think people typically think of Kevin, uh, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall as the Outsiders. Yeah, I don't. But they changed everything. Mm -hmm. The whole industry changed when the Outsiders showed up. They are also six-time tag team champions. Uh, number seven, New Day. And the New Day only, would be probably two or three, but they're a trio. And I don't love the free bird rule. I don't love tr a trio being a tag team. I know they're great. I know they're probably one of the best. If, you know, some people could argue they're the best ever. I just don't love a trio as a tag team. So I dropped them down because of that. I have a tie at five. Edge and Christian and the Hardys tied at five. So and five I think, and six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Five and six. Five A, five B, however yep. you want. And you don't need to, I don't think much needs to be explained about them. No, I mean, the, the TLC, WrestleMania 2000, right. absolutely. Number four, New Age Outlaws. Again, don't need to explain a ton there. They, they you know, DX, New Age Outlaws. Yeah, they're, they're incredible. New Age Outlaws, I mean... When you were watching Monday Night Raw late 80s, you didn't get the full Monday Night Raw experience if you missed the New Age Outlaws intro every night. You had, exactly. you had to be there. Oh, you didn't know? If, right. if you weren't watching at the time, if you got to go to the bathroom or something, you missed it. You didn't get the full show. Yep. Number three, Road Warriors. And this is the one that was tough for me, I, but because their prime run was... Again, it, part of WWF run was like when I was like five, six, seven years old. Yeah. But it sticks out to me. I still remember, like, I was excited at then. Like, there's a reason it's the Road Warrior pop, right? Mm -hmm. When you hear, oh, what a rush. Like, if you heard it right now, you would go crazy. Uh, that's how impactful they were in the short amount of time they were there. Two, Dudleys. They have like 800 tag titles. <laughs> I don't think uh, I don't think people were actually using tables the way they use tables before the Dudleys and tub tables are the most the biggest thing now or biggest weapon in wrestling. Mm -hmm. And then number one, the Usos. Wow. And and we could talk about why, but I ran it through in my mind a lot. And the best ever, the Usos. It 
I last night obviously solidified a lot of things because now they're the longest reigning champs. But the work they've done the last six years for let's not talk about bloodline. Yeah, so how about that? So so with without what they've done the last, let's say, you know, two years when they the gimmick changed, you wouldn't have had them up there. No, the gimmick didn't change two years ago. The gimmick changed in 2016, Zaslow. Six years Uso ago. Uso Penitentiary. That was six years ago? Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Uso Penitentiary. That was yes. six years ago? Yes. They've been at the top of the top for six for five years. Because before years. that, with the face paints, you would not have right. had them. Right. But they debuted in 2000. They debuted ago? with the face paint as well, actually, they debuted as heels, but they became the like the the baby face whatever's in 2010. Is that almost 13 years on the main roster yeah as the usos they went the first five years buried in this terrible gimmick and halfway through a, a lot of people would be out of the business with the gimmick they had halfway through they turn it around and become arguably obviously the best tag team gimmick of all time the Who's uso this? penitentiary the uso penitentiary was awesome yeah was awesome and now yeah. it's evolved into what it is now with the bloodline and now they're the longest reigning tag team champs of all time. And they're the purest of the pure in terms of attack. They're literally twin brothers. It doesn't get much more pure of a tag team than that. Usos are number one all time for me. 